So let us conclude our discussion on sorting by looking at some other issues. So one of the issues is something called stability. So very often we are not sorting single values, but we are sorting compound values. So imagine that we have a table and we are sorting the rows in the table. So each element that we want to sort corresponds to one row. So one row usually corresponds to values for many columns, right? So it's a tuple of values. It could be, for example, a list of students and each student has along the columns you have the roll number, you have the name, you have the marks and so on. So you can think of what you are sorting as actually a spreadsheet, right? So your list is the list of rows, but each element in your list consists of some subparts. So now when we sort, we typically sort on one or more of these subparts. Right? These subparts are attributes or columns. So you might want to sort by name, or you might want to sort by roll number, or you might want to sort by marks. And quite often you might want to sort something which has already been sorted. So for instance, it could be that your list is provided to you by roll number. Okay? And now, for whatever reason, you want to group the students in alphabetical order of name. So you sort them by alphabetical order of name. Now the question is when I sort by alphabetical order of name, I might get two students who have the same name. They would have had a roll number. In the original sorting, one of them would have a smaller roll number than the other. In the new sorting by name, are the roll numbers still in the same order or not? Or have they got shuffled? Right? So this is something that we want to know. So or for example, supposing you have sorted in alphabetical order of name. And now you want to sort by marks. Now when you get the same students with the same marks, are they sorted in alphabetical order of name or do they get shuffled? So this is called stable sorting, right? So stability, right, says that when I sort on another column, it should not disturb the sorting on a previous column. So later sorting should not disturb an earlier thing. And this is something which is quite natural if you actually work with sorted things in spreadsheets and all that. If you sort on something, you don't want to go back and figure out that something else has got sorted badly in, that you had already sorted in a previous column. So unfortunately, the quick sort implementation that we looked at is not going to be stable because it does all this if you remember, you suddenly do these kind of exchanges, right? So if these values originally were in some order with respect to some value you are not using right now for sorting, and if while partitioning you are sort of swapping things around, then you might very well be exchanging things which are equal in some other uh, key, and this is not good, right? So the partitioning of quick sort has to be very carefully done to make sure that it is stable. It is possible to do it, but not the partitioning that we saw. Merge sort is easier to do. Basically, what you want to make sure is that when I have something like 1, 3, 7 and merge it with say 2, 7, 9, right? So maybe this had an A and this had a B with it, right? So I want to make sure that in the final list, the A7 comes before the B7. This is what stability means. It means that in the final list, I want 1, 2, 3, 7, 7, 9, but the order of the 7s should be in the same order in which I was presented to me begin in the beginning. I should not have 7b followed by 7a, even though a and b are not part of my current sorting procedure. So I am not looking at the a and b, but I want to guarantee that this doesn't happen. So in merge, what you do is basically, if I see the same value on both sides, then I will move the one from the left first. So the value from the right should not overtake the value on the left. If you guarantee that, that your merge has this kind of preference for the left list, when you compare equal values, then you will get a stable merge. Now we have looked at basically criteria which involve the number of comparisons and swaps that we make. But there are situations where actually the data has to physically be moved and it's not an easy thing to move data from one place to another. So you can imagine that the data is sitting in some heavy boxes. So supposing you are doing a physical sorting or something, then one of the things that you might want to minimize is not just the number of boxes you examine and exchange. You might be willing to look at more boxes to examine and exchange if you have to move fewer boxes overall, right? So data movement is an orthogonal thing compared to anything that we have discussed so far. But this is also an important criterion when looking at certain categories of sorting. So sorting is a fairly vast, as we said, sorting is used as a first step for a large number of things and there are many different dimensions to sorting which people have looked at. So you should not think that you know if you know merge sort and quick sort you have exhausted everything to do with sorting. There is a lot of sorting which is still there and many different ways of sorting which emphasize different aspects of the problem. 
So is there a best sorting algorithm? Well, as you can see from our discussion, the hints are quite clear that there is no best sorting algorithm overall. Quick sort is, as we said, very often the algorithm of choice when we are using uh, built-in functions and all that, people use quick sort despite its worst case. But there are situations like we were talking about those boxes where you do not have the luxury of sorting everything as a function. So sometimes you need to sort example in a database and in a database you need to put parts of the data into memory and part out. So this is called external sorting. So usually merge sort is used for external sorting. And merge sort is not the only n log n algorithm. There is also an algorithm which we will see later called heap sort which also does n log n. So there are other n log n algorithms. And very often you might actually use a hybrid strategy. So you might use a divide and conquer strategy when n is large, but then when you get down to a small list, say like uh, 16 or 32, you might switch over to insertion sort. So, so a lot of different ways are there of combining uh, algorithms or of using the properties of algo sorting algorithms for different situations. So you, it's useful to know that all these exist, although in many cases you will typically be using a built-in sorting routine. So you don't really need to know the sorting algorithm as long as a built-in sort function works. But there are situations where you will need to sort for yourself and then it's useful to know that there are these different options and they all have their pluses and their minuses.